G'day and welcome to Forgotten Tasmania. I'm John Stevenson. Sometimes when I'm looking for a photo to work with in the collection, I'll pick one and I'm not really sure why I've picked it. And that's the case of this one in Cascade Creek. I wasn't really sure why I chose it, but then I found out that it's actually connected to a whole heap of things. So it was a really good decision. The Beattie Studio Collection has thousands of photos dating back to the 1800s. Mr Beattie must have had a catalogue because all the photos are numbered with a unique number. But the catalogue never made it to me. Whether it never got passed down, whether it was destroyed in a fire or just lost, I don't know. So I've got nothing to go on. Well, that's not really true. It's not nothing because I've got some really amazing friends who are Tasmanian historians and they're very generous with their time. Uh, plus that and Google means there's actually a lot of information hiding out there. The first things I can assume about this photo all come from the title. Being titled by Mr Beattie himself, I know it was taken prior to his death in 1930. And there's no road to the pinnacle visible in the photo, which supports that. The road didn't go all the way to the top of the mountain until the 1930s. It was officially opened in 1937. Once we found the spot, it became much easier to find out about the photo. From the recreation we know that it was taken at the Cascade Gardens in South Hobart, an area of park just below the brewery along the Hobart Town Rivulet, which used to be called Cascade Creek. By the 1870s, Tasmanians were getting out more. As we built a public transport system with electric trams and trolley buses, people liked to get out and spend time in the environment. People had leisure time and they wanted to use it for enjoyment. One of the places the trams could take you was up to South Hobart, the foot of the mountain. There was a culture of building huts on the slopes of the mountain, little shacks and getaways. The expert on that subject is historian Maria Grist, who really came to the party for this episode. She provided me with her manuscript on tea gardens in Hobart. The story of the Cascade Tea Gardens actually starts here in Lower Sandy Bay. A Mr Frederick Lipscomb had a tea gardens. Uh, that was located roughly where the Beach House Hotel used to be. His son Leslie had a tea gardens a little further up at what is now the intersection of Lipscomb Avenue and Sandy Bay Road. And a part of their property was eventually uh, divided off and given to the church and that's where the St Stephen's Church sits today. But it was his son Theo who started the Cascade Tea Gardens in 1894. The Lipscomb family were nurserymen so they grew lots of flowering plants and that was why they decorated their tea gardens with the flowers. At one point it was said they had 10,000 bulbs on display in their gardens. The Cascade Tea Gardens changed hands a few times. By 1898 a Mr Sawyer was running it. The gardens extended over the rivulet and were quite an elaborate affair. Sawyer added electric lights. This was quite an innovation at the time. There were ferns and seats and the venue had frequent live music and even a movie screen at one point. It was quite a place to go, accommodating four to five hundred people. The major drawcard was the fact that the South Hobart tram terminal was right there at the brewery and decided the location of the gardens. It became very popular because of the easy access from Hobart City. Mr Beatty continued to refer to the gardens as Lipscomb's Tea Gardens even after Mr Sawyer had taken over. The Sawyers continued to operate the Cascade Tea Gardens until just after World War II. The tea gardens were still listed in the directory in 1948. The gardens went into serious decline during the 1950s and the 1967 bushfires devastated the area destroying much of the tea gardens complex. Our photo must be prior to 1894 as it doesn't show the gardens at all, just the creek. Today it's still a beautiful area to visit, now known as the Cascade Gardens. I'd like to thank Maria Grist for sharing her information with us. There's a link to her website where you can buy her book, The Romance of Mount Wellington. It's all about the culture of huts on the mountain. It's a great read. Thank you very much. Catch you in the next episode.